Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today with me I have Arvin Obra. Uh, Arvin is the director of workforce management at T-Tech and today we'll be covering how to succeed in his career. Let's go. Harvin, how are you doing? Hey, Andre. I'm doing good. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you as well. So for everyone that doesn't know you, you have a very long career on workforce management, which I think we'll cover in more detail. But before we go that, do you mind just sharing with our listeners a bit of who you are and where you are from? Yeah, thanks for that, Andre. First of all, I'm very honored to, to be part of this podcast discussing about our passion, WFM, our workforce management. And I'm very excited to, to talk to you about my career journey, what it looks like for, for WFM and some other exciting things. So for, for everyone, I'm Arvin Obra. I am from the Philippines. I, I've been a workforce professional for about 17 years. I started my career, of course, at the entry level, so to speak, for, for WFM folks to be a real-time analyst. So we we handled the queue and they worked my way up to a scheduler. And then most of my time, really, I've got to spend my workforce career in forecasting and planning before moving on to the leadership position from the manager to a senior manager and now as a director for, for one of the global companies handling different verticals of the industry, like financial, retail, communication. I would say I have a vast experience with with most of those industries already, with all of the upcoming as well. Very exciting. Just now during or after the pandemic, there's a lot of processes that we've supported as well. It keeps on revolving. The, the landscape of WFM is really expanding compared to, you know, when I started way back in 17 years. So... <laughs> Really and, I, and I think that's a good a good introduction that helps me ask you one of the questions that we normally ask, which is to sure. help you define in your own, own words what workforce management means to you. So what, what does it mean to you? Right. <laughs> I always love that, you know, even talking to some some friends, my even my families don't know about WFM or what I do. So to put it, you know, very on, on layman's term, or should, should I say, you know, for, for everyone to understand, for, for those who are listening, I'd call it probably uh, imagine you're, you know, you're supervising or you're overseeing a supply chain for to cater for a particular demand, be it a product, be it a service, whatever. So for perspective, first timers, especially who, who are who's listening, uh, I'd like to cite an example of, you know, a fast food chain restaurant. So, of course, the demand the demand there would be our customers demanding for food and service. As a restaurant owner, I would love to see or look at, you know, how, how I'm going to staff my business to make my brand successful, you know, who serves food in a minute or two minutes. So, so that's the demand. And then to do that, to be able to hire people who can you know, stay in the kitchen, cook for food, some a cashier who will take the orders and some waiters probably to, to serve the food and clean the table. So all of that we will come from, of course, the experience I, when I observe my business like, right every day. So I'm going to look at, you know, what days of the week, probably on weekends would be very busy for me. Uh, even the, the intervals where, where people come in. Is it lunch? Is it dinner? So that, that those information for me as a business owner would be good intelligence for me to make my brand successful, catering to the demand of my customers and be able to supply the, the amount of workforce or personnel that I'm going to need to, to be able to cater that demand. Yeah. I've made it as simple as I can, Andre. <laughs> it's not, it's never easy. and I, But I, I like the fact that you started with the supply and demand because we... 
in previous episodes, we mentioned about that there is very strong connections on the same way we look at supply chain and we look at us, but just what we are moving is different things, like they are moving parcels or they are moving yeah. physical things, and we are just making sure yeah. that virtually we have people available to actually provide service, which you started from, I think, a very a very good point. And I agree. From, from, from what you described, how do you think that our industry within workforce management what what do you think it's the level of maturity that we we have today okay i'd like to use my own scale like a workforce scale if you may so Please. give a one to ten workforce scale one being you know i could say uh, my baseline would be 2006 where when i started my career as wfm so from from that timeline i would say I'd rate WFM right now as to be on the level of six or seven. And I, I, I'd like to put it that way from that, you know, going back from that 2006 that, that, mm -hmm. that I mentioned where I started my career, there's certainly a lot of advancements via technology, via processes that, that have evolved in, in, in WFM. Like I remember supporting campaigns or programs who do their scheduling manually <laughs> when we do our scheduling via Excel spreadsheet. Now we, we have lots of tools. There's even cloud-based applications that you can use, you know, web-based via the, those who are connecting via other, other types of applications. So, yeah. and in terms of processes, so that's just the technology part of that, what I'm telling. So being six or seven in the industry, there's a lot more in store for, for WFM, especially now, as I've mentioned, going back to my statement earlier that, you know, uh, there's a lot of industries, you know, being supported now versus compared to, to way back before with, with the social media, with the gaming industries that have been really, you know, becoming or very popular nowadays. Very so yeah, advancement is certainly very visible to all WFM practitioners, but we may all agree that there's still a lot in store in terms of process improvements and how we can take advantage of the different types of technologies that are coming in to, to make our work probably more efficient and not, not really easier, but you know, how, how we can be more agile to the, to the demands of, of what we're doing. Yeah. I think let, let me try to, this will be a bit controversial for everyone listening, but I think I, I agree yeah. with you, and I think the you mentioned a good point, which is technology has evolved a lot. Like there, like I remember back in the day, everything was in house. It started to become cloud. Yeah. We start moving away from like the physical servers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So everything everything became a bit more agile and less dependent on, on very expensive and time consuming manual, setups. Manual things, yeah. Uh, at the same time, we uh, and in the previous in one of the previous episodes, we spoke about the the needs to develop as a person so the professionals that are, the skills are are changing and i think we are yeah. going to one of those transformations again where the skill set that you needed when you started or when i started like 15 yeah. 17 years ago might, might be is very yeah. different from today and and the question yeah. i wanted to ask is like what what do you think that is missing to expand that six or seven to an eight uh, or a nine like what do you think that are the next things that uh, that we need to develop yeah good good question that's very interesting and very as you mentioned very controversial yeah we, we've seen technology change our lives our daily lives that is right from from where we were before but yeah certainly technology would be a big part like automation would be a big key i i guess that there's certainly a lot of efforts being put in automation right now um as i speak to to other colleagues in the in the industry so a lot of companies have already moved or, you know, have been moving to, to automation, automating processes. So I would say that, that really that advantage of the different tools the technology can offer would be very critical for, for us to really move that scale from, from what I've mentioned from a seven, uh, let's just say it's seven to a nine or 10 to, to yeah. fully you know, harness the, the the potential of what technology can, can bring. If I read it right, so it's a lot to embrace. We need to embrace that process change because I, I think by nature we, and I'm, I'm speaking by myself, I don't know if you feel the same, but like I think within this specific industry and everyone that works on, on planning and forecasting, it's easy to get stuck with the current setup and ways of working. And as things evolve, 
you mentioned about automation, there is a lot of process changes that automation can enable. And that I think is, is also a, a, a challenging moment for everyone because they need to grow through that change, embrace that change and capitalize on those changes to actually progress. No, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that statement, Andre. So yeah, and we, we always say that why, why fix what's not broken, right? But it, it's different. So that, that yeah. you know, that that level of maturity for us to understand and be, be open to the development that, you know, automation can, can bring us like, I myself, you know, I can honestly say that I've made a lot of templates you know that, that that i couldn't let go like i i would be very anxious you know that that something can replace it you know automate it and and produce the same generate the same result that that confidence you know that that yeah. confidence that i have in my my templates or, or my process that you know that that I couldn't let go right away. So it's yeah, really... You, you, you made know, a very good point. And I think that resonates with almost everyone. Like we, we, we call it like our babies. We have been working so many hours on building it, those the, those things. And then templates, suddenly yeah. you are like, does it still fit the purpose? And that helps me ask you another question, which is what do you think is needed to succeed in the WFM career right now? And I'm going to speak about my experience and what, what I've learned. You know, I've yeah. I've met a lot of people in the industry, be it in our company. So for, for WFM, it's really, I would call a niche still, you know, in, w, in, in BPO setup or contact centers, because we, we all know operations when they hear, when they hear someone working in a BPO, like, oh, you're taking in calls, right? No, And I tell them that I'm from WFM. So wh wh what was that? Like, right? So from, from my experience, the, the first thing I would say would be to be successful. And I can share just, I, I can, I have, the, the list can go on and on, but I, I just like to focus on three important points that I can, you know, share to, to the listeners. So first would be, be, very you must be very passionate about your job like, like not just in wfm right it's very applicable to to every type of job because if you don't love something that you do then you wouldn't have time to to ask questions to to be open for for changes or development right so you should be able to to be able to ask questions and to challenge yourself on the work that you're doing like process improvement is a big part of you know of that like not being stuck in in a comfort zone that you wouldn't want to let go or let other people you know introduce something to, to you so for for me that's the ver very first important thing to be able to to embrace wfm 100 percent you have to be very passionate about the, the work that you're going to do especially that you were already so you, you might be stuck like this is just wfm but in reality i mean if you go if you go up and open yourself up uh, to, to the different people, then you, you will see that, that there's a lot of things that, that are in store for you in, in WFM. And the second one, you know, WFM is really rooted on the mathematical process or numbers, that's data, data gathering. So I would say the second skill would be or a trait that, that would really help, you know, someone doing a, a a job in WFM would be be very detail oriented. Like a minute mistake might really be be very costly. To to you know you're not just working with with WFM. It's it's not the case. So that there's operations, there's different you know branches of I would say different branches that would have a that would feel the impact of you know of having to report something or, or share something that that's inaccurate. So that, that be, being very detail oriented would allow you to be very critical in the data being shared and the analysis. The recommendations is the most important thing. It's based on fact, so it's really very factual and based on you know data, right? So I would say that's the second one. And then the the third thing that would be very critical to to be able to succeed would be be uh, be very agile or the, the agility so it's really a very fast-paced environment like when, when you're working in 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 the contact centers and you have to deal with a lot of issues every now and then that's why we have real-time folks 
just really looking at what's happening and you know be be very able to to respond right away so being receptive to what's happening so being prepared for 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 your mitigation plans uh, that mm-hmm. could happen in daily operation so and you have to make those decisions very quickly of course not not backed up by facts again going back to number 2 like you have to check your data very carefully first before you know it's okay. really expected that you mm-hmm. yeah it's really expected that you you make a quick call for 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 urgent items treat everything with with, with you know with prior as a priority from from day to day yeah and i think uh, i was taking notes and i think you, you you mentioned it quite well so it's passion and agility the first one and last one and i think that the numbers and the recommendations and telling the right story like i think you you collapsed it quite well what was the most demanding part in your role so passion from these three passion all the mm-hmm. detail piece and the agility which one was the hardest one and most demanding as you were growing to develop in your skill set i would say for for me right now on my position right it's the agility piece like i handle the, the entire wfm cycle from planning scheduling in real time so everything that 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 could that would impact all of those processes would break the daily, daily operation would have a big impact so i have to really move in very quickly of course i have developed that you know someone will provide the, those information and then from from that information i'll have to quickly in a snap be able to provide my recommendation and a quick analysis and you know what's the next best thing and be able to collaborate with, with the the rest of you know who, the, the people who will be impacted by that mm-hmm. decision so it, it, there is a lot of if i if i read it right and for our audience there is a lot of collaboration like you just said but it is also it about is. it's all about storytelling and making sure that you are facilitating the decision making process uh, which yeah. i think it's super clear so when you were specifically now that i mean you are already a senior leader on, on, on within within WFM what skill set did you develop that you would recommend everyone that is now starting that i mean you mentioned about the things that are important but is there anything in particular that you would recommend for anyone who wants to aspire to become a leader that they should invest on their own skill set well yeah definitely mathematical skills is there you have to develop that and uh, you know as i also I, I mentioned it earlier like most of the wfm process starts with you know is rooted in you must know at least the basic and how to interpolate data information and inverse calculation so that's very a big part and you know that, that if you have that mathematical skills you will you know, at a glance, you will be able to see outliers or be able to discern things like help you make that those that I'm mentioning that quick decisions like in a snap when, when you're able to when you're trained to to look at the daily numbers, then, you know, you will be guided throughout your your journey. And then it goes back to the attention to detail that you mentioned before, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, every day you, you review a lot of numbers so everything of that would have impact. So basically the 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 numbers would you know would mm-hmm. really impact your or your decision or influence your decision decision making mm-hmm. uh, and yeah i've mentioned collaborative so people skills is like with any other job like people skills be able to communicate very well because you might have the the right numbers in front of you but to be able to to make that execute to, to execute that decision very well you have to impart the correct you know the, mm-hmm. the correct information and how 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 you will guide the leaders would you know would really impact that how you really engage that using your communication skills and arvin i would love to challenge you to think that you you would be starting your career in WFM today, what would be your priority uh, to develop in your career? So if you, if you were starting today, for everyone listening that is starting their careers today, what would you recommend to be their priorities to start the career? Well, yeah, we, we've talked a lot about technology, so <laughs> you must be tech savvy, I guess. You, you, <laughs> you must be 
not be one of those on the other end of the line calling our you know our contact centers asking to how to boot your computer <laughs> how to connect to a wi-fi you know no, i'm just joking but you know and you know you can learn a lot of things like technology savvy doesn't mean that you're just going to train yourself like you you have to to do your own research like what are the other you know tools i've been using these tools for for quite a long time now i've been used to these tools already but are there any other tools out there that that can you know that could be very viable as, as a replacement that could serve me better in, in my daily job. So that, that's just not really training yourself, but getting to learn what's what's still out there. I mean, that, that there's a lot of tools that you can take advantage of, like this podcast, probably your other colleagues from other contact centers or companies that can share, you know, what, what they have been doing, like, like, you know, brainstorming and everything that that would be my... I think you made a good point about the um, the fact that that need of being resourceful. Like you, you, we started about speaking about change and being comfortable yeah. with, with change. Yeah. And you just mentioned what you were describing. Like people get used to their tools and they get on their own world. But the truth is that for you to do the next step, there is something that needs to be added to your skill set. And I think that is very, very good point on being okay and changing and being... I think it's about being comfortable creating discomfort in your own career to move a step forward you need you need you need that piece that's a very good recommendation so on a personal note like who who inspired you the most and and why during during your career hmm. interesting so yeah of course my family my friends they inspired me because you know they put me in a good school and they you know graduated college and they have high expectations and you know any parent would, would want their child to be successful right so that's they, they are my inspiration they, they raised me and my siblings to be in a good college to have a a good career in the future and then of course my my wife and my child so they are the reason why i do what i do right so that they push me to love my job and uh, to, to work more, to work harder for them. And it's then that um, first step, the passion, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, something to, to work for, right? Something to, to look forward to also when, when you're working. So family is always the first thing, but of course, professionally, uh, I, I would remember my first boss who trusted me. Like I, I moved over Andre from one company as a resource planner or forecasting analyst to another company as a manager. So, so my first leader who, who believed in me, like with my capabilities really inspired me like, oh, it's, it's really hard for, for that transition for me during that time, it's difficult for me to someone to transition for, for a leadership role coming from, from another company, um, to another company. So that was a, a a big or a big step in my career so and all of the bosses all of the bosses i have after my that that first boss who gave me that break in wfm i'm um, in the leadership role for wfm mm -hmm. they've imparted they imparted a lot of things that created me like mold me into the person that i am right now as a professional yeah all those coaching and you know all those uh, coaching and uh, talks that we've had certainly did did really you know inspired me to to become better and to be more passionate going back to that to be more passionate in my job and and i think you thanks you, for that you, uh, i think had us you know reminisce some of that <laughs> good good times that's that's good that that's that's the reason why we asked this question and, and i think it's it's always inspiring to see that there is like i think everyone that we ever asked this question there is always someone that had that breakthrough that you you basically saw something in you that probably you were not seeing at the time. And I think that's that's always remarkable to see. You you started by saying, of course, you had the opportunity to 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 study in and develop. And you mentioned the important thing about mathematics. And I think your your degree touches a lot on on say on the science behind it yeah. and, and mathematics. How do you think that that played a role on your career like how much how, how important was that in the starting of your career that background 
my background. Yeah, so I I am an economics graduate, <laughs> so that's why the, the the supply and demand piece would be very familiar <laughs> to, to me. So yeah, and my my college background, so economics would would have a lot of mathematics that regression analysis that we were using for forecasting predictive models that we have really you know i had to go back actually to 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 college lectures and that really you know resourcefulness how to apply that so it's all theory it's all theoretical and applied in a different in a very different manner during college but you know as you you work through wfm you 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 know going to come back like probably not even an economics student but it, for me it's it's very good background to have or for for me and i have had a little bit of accounting as well accounting subjects so yeah, which helps auditing. a lot with the budgets and the, and the finances yeah, so those <laughs> seeing you know reviewing information and balancing so all of that so the, the, those i'm quite lucky to to have that background and and just to share andre so it, you know, as I've mentioned, it's a niche like WFM wasn't really popular mm -hmm. during that 2006 era in WFM. So I really wanted to 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 join operations like the rest of my colleagues, like my teammates who were applying for a team lead position. So that was really the first break for WFM. Then there was a, a program that is launching or is hiring for a lot of um, uh, leaders from team lead and everyone. So the, someone. And, and just tying that up with the economics piece. So that yeah. person who interviewed me saw that, you know, I, I have a degree in economics. So she was the one who recommended me to, to go to workforce rather than, rather than operation. So she said it's more suited to, to my background. And true enough, I mean, <laughs> I've call. been here for <laughs> seven, 17 years, still a lot to learn. I mean, but. Yeah, just a uh, think... short. <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah. she found the right trajectory. Yeah. So we normally ask this one question to the end about if there were no limitations, meaning like no budget constraints, time, resources, you could get everything. What would be the one thing that you would fix in the WFM industry? Well, yeah, there's a lot of difficulties, probably some challenges with other programs. Not all of them have a good reporting tool where you house that data in, with, that you can, you know, say it's hundred percent, that data is protected hundred percent with integrity. Right. So, um, getting that information, I guess, from, from one source and then to be able to manipulate that information. So again, that, that piece of technology and automation coming into play, like probably a PBX switch going into, a be it what whatever system that the client mm -hmm. is using or wh wh whatever you know technology they are using you are able to store it in a technology i know currently that there's a lot of efforts to to do that data warehousing because wh when you have all the information then there's a the sky's the limit for for what you can do right so for our predictive models that we use in in wfm for you know backtracking historical data like looking back for or just you know looking at the same industry like the same for for communications for example to be able to launch successfully a new program you have to be able to benchmark it from from another industry for, for another program that is running the same so all of those information would have unlimited benefits for 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 wfm professionals mm -hmm. uh, with the help of you know bring that information and be able to know with the limited iterations that you can do in that information. Yeah. So I guess for, for me, so, that, that's very integral piece. Yeah, I think, that, I think that would solve a lot of problems, especially that you mentioned the integration between systems and how, how much sometimes the time consuming systems. to yeah. transform data, connect it. If there was some kind of layer or software, whatever we want to call it, that would ease that pain from all of us between systems would, uh, and they would be very yeah. happy with with that. even agent behavior if we can track everything that they do on their pc like helping their handle time helping our shrinkage to be able to understand you know what what are those important you know assumptions we will look like if we're able to 
mm-hmm. efficiently understand what's happening on the ground. But to, to, to be able to capture all of those information in one source or to be able to warehouse it yeah. would, would reap a lot of benefits for, for us to really understand what's, what's really driving what we need to understand. So yeah. analytics, what, what, yeah, analytics is really a a good place to start. So Arvin, we we are on the on the final on the final line. Anything you want to you want to take the opportunity to share? Any recommendations to everyone listening, especially when it touches about developing their careers? Any any final words? Yeah, just uh, just uh, add on that being passionate about WFM. So. Do not be afraid to to discover new things with, with WFM. It's it's really a lot. Of, there's going to be a lot of challenges if you plan to join in WFM. There's a lot to learn. Uh, understanding just so with other businesses, you have to to learn your craft. You have to understand the needs of the business, and uh, probably most WFM would be stuck in numbers or analysis paralysis. I, you know, as uh, as we we have experienced that that there's a lot of numbers being thrown into you. There's a lot of analysis being provided, but the last thing, the last step that is very most important to have with those analyses is to be able to have your call to action uh, to those recommendations. So you you've mentioned something about probably this is you know this is how I see our how to improve our shrinkage. So this is my call to action, and you know that's. That's the meat probably of what we're all doing in WFM. Like we, we don't just provide numbers and throw it to ops and call it out. <laughs> just call out, you know, that this is too high or this is too low. We need to add this. We need to subtract this. But at the end of the day, to WFM is a support if, for, for all the listeners. So WFM is part of a support structure of a contact center. So we should act as a support group for for to operations, which is our main client internally, we would love to see, you know, WFM be proactive in not just calling out, but providing your recommendation and call to action. That's what they are yearning for. That that's the, the value that we can add to, to the businesses, you know, to, to really be, to have a sound uh, mm-hmm. action items for, for them to uh, actionable items so, so that they can take advantage or, you know, see what the you know the the difference that wfm can make in the business i i love it i think it's a perfect way to end so i make my recommendation is be brave and create that discomfort because sometimes you create discomfort asking the right questions but that's that's probably the most important part of your job more than just presenting the numbers is being proactive and add that call to action so what a way to end arvin thank you so much for joining us today And for everyone listening, I hope you guys stay in touch and see you in another episode. Thank you so much, Arvin, one more time. Thank you, Andre. It was a pleasure.